If you're watching this video, then I know what you're thinking. Do I want a 1025? Do I need a 1025? Will a garden tractor do it? Do I need something bigger? Well, in this video here, let's see if the 1025, if a subcompact, but the 1025 in particular, is the right machine for you. Far and away, it's been the most popular subcompact or compact tractor that's been on the market. Let's go ahead and give you 10 reasons why. Before I forget, hit that subscribe button under the video, read that description below, all sorts of helpful links on where to get cool tractor stuff like this, and check out the other videos on the channel. So first reason you might want to buy a 1025R is homeowner independence, all right? Gonna allow you to mow, gonna allow you to plow, gonna allow you to do your landscaping, put your food plots in, do your driveway grading, property maintenance, all sorts of projects, leaf cleanup in the fall, you name it. You can do all sorts of things if you have a tractor like this because you have the ability to put a min-mount mower, you got ability for a front-end loader, for a backhoe, for a bagger, for your three-point hitch, all sorts of rear attachments on there. You name it, you can do it with one of these machines. I'm telling you, it opens up a whole new world. You can save all sorts of contractor expenses of, of hiring it out instead. You know, even if you have to buy an additional tool, you know, an attachment for the front or the back or whatever the case might be, you still have that tool at the end of the job there to be able to tackle it the next year, the year after that, or maybe just sell that tool after you're done and really minimize the cost. Or here's an idea, practice on your own property, then hire your services out, make a few bucks in your, in your spare time, have some fun. That's a win-win situation right there. The point being, you get to tackle those projects when you have the time. You know, on your schedule, you know, after you get out of work on the weekdays, on the weekends, you don't have to worry about renting equipment or trying to struggle with equipment that's just really not built to do the job. Great machine here can tackle all sorts of projects for you. There's a ton of videos out there on YouTube. Check them out. All sorts of crazy things. Well, and not so crazy things, just practical things that you wouldn't think this machine could do. The 1025 can come equipped with a 260B, or if you're looking at a 2017 and older, just a 260 backhoe, but you're gonna see the 260B, just so you know, it's gonna have its own seat. The older style is gonna have a swivel seat. The one main seat there will swivel around, but this is the backhoe for the 1025R. You know, not everybody needs this, and I'm not a huge proponent of backhoes, but if you want one, this is what you're gonna look at right here. You got the ability to put a thumb on here also, but it's just great to know you have this option available if you want it. Now this is a standard backhoe bucket that comes on here, but Muds Customs makes wider buckets, they make trenching buckets, they're going to make a ripper tooth, all sorts of good stuff. And even better, you get 5% off a discount code GWT at Muds Customs on anything for your tractor. I promise guys I'm going to do a video on how to remove and reinstall this backhoe here. It's very simple though. The instructions are right here. If you follow them to a T, you can have this thing on and off in less than 5 minutes. It really is not difficult at all to do. This right here is the belly mower, okay? The drive over mower deck for the 1025R. This is the 54 inch, you can also get a 60 inch. What this means, you can go ahead and mow your lawn with this machine. You can take the mower deck on and off very easy. I'll put a link above so you can see just how easy it is to take this mower deck on and off. But they're gonna be standard drive over here. You can also get an auto PTO coupler here. So that way you don't have to get underneath and worry about removing a PTO a connection there if you don't want to. So it's an awesome system. This is something that nobody else offers that's on the market in the subcompacts. Well, Kubota sorta has a drive over auto connect system. I've done a video on that actually as well, but this is far and away the most refined, easy to use system. Not gonna say it's perfect all the time, but the easiest to use and almost completely problem free system that's out there. I'm telling you, if you need a mower deck, you hate pulling them out from the side. Maybe it, you're just older and you don't wanna mess with it because it's so heavy and cumbersome. This is the way to go, I'm telling you. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, this loader system here, again, you know, you can call me biased if you want to, but I could sell any machine out there. I'm not a John Deere dealer. I'm not a Kubota dealer. I'm not Mahindra, not Coyote. I'm not tied to any manufacturer that's out there. I choose to sell the John Deere tractors and I choose to sell Kubotas as well, nothing else. But I'm telling you, my opinion, because I've used all of the systems, this loader system right here, along with that mower deck, along with that backhoe system, is the easiest to use far and away. Of course, anybody can have problems, especially when you sell in such mass quantities as these tractors are sold. But I'm telling you, this is nearly a problem-free design. It's very simple. There's, it's not complicated in any regard here, but it's very robust as well. And not only is it an easy on, easy off system with an integrated parking stand, I've done videos on this too. So I'll post a link above so you can see how to uh, remove and reinstall, how simple the process is. But standard is a quick attach system between the loader and the bucket, okay? It's a quick attach that you wanna have, allows you to put on a set of pallet fork frames like this. This is a prototype stump bucket right here that we've uh, designed as patent pending right now. It'll be ready for production soon, but designed for the smaller tractors like this right here to make it just a more versatile system, a more versatile machine for you, but you got your bucket, you can put a set of pallet forks on, a snow pusher, a grapple, all sorts of things up here. It's a really amazing design.
So just like those other attachments that are John Deere attachments, the loader, the mower, the backhoe are just heads and tails above the others. Finally, all sorts of aftermarket manufacturers are getting with the program and making attachments specifically designed for the ever popular subcompact tractor. So what you see here, this is going to be a dethatcher, all right? This is a 60 inch wide dethatcher. I actually just got this hooked up. I just, I couldn't even wait. I just went to do a little test run up front there. I'll show you the results as well, but this is not only a dethatcher, but it could be used as a pine straw, straw rake. It could be used to clear trails. It can be used to just rake your leaves up in the fall. Um, can be used to resurface drives even. It's very versatile. It's very affordable. It's available for sale on GoodWorksTractors.com. What a great job this is. Sure beats a rake. Can imagine it doing the same thing on leaves as well, but cleaned up everything really, really well right down. Doesn't scrape too bad into the ground either. Just enough, you know it was there. It grabs the ground quite well, but you can use it forwards or backwards. But that is far from the only example of attachments and accessories that are designed for these subcompact tractors. Now, the list just goes on and on and on. And what I mean designed for them are typically gonna be size proportionally, weight proportionally, or fit proportionally, or a combination of everything. We're gonna be talking about rakes, and grapples, and box blades, and tooth bars, and snow pushers, and accessories like steps, and grab handles, and mirror mounts, and the list just goes on and on. Even dual wheel adapters for more stability side to side. I'm telling you, it's just a, an ever-expanding list, and I'm happy to be part of that list with something like that stump bucket with many more offerings to come. Now, if you're struggling between that decision of garden tractor or if I go one series subcompact, I'm telling you, for most people, it makes sense to get the subcompact. I've done a whole video explaining the reasons why, so I'm not gonna get into all the ins and outs of it, but you go to a high-end garden tractor like an X7 series. Let's say you're debating an X738, X758, one of the four-wheel drive variants versus a John Deere one series. You know, really, unless you have absolutely 100% certain no no reason to ever get a three-point hitch, a rear PTO, or front-end loader, anything like that along those lines. Maybe, you know, maybe that's a good decision for you. However, the price point is so close that by the time you figure in what it would cost to add on something like this three-point hitch and a rear PTO, you can't even get a loader for the X7 series at all. The resale value of something like this compared to an, an X7 series garden tractor is going to be better. It just is. You know, I'm telling you, weigh that decision, watch the video, I'll put a link above here. 1025R is the way to go. And if you're thinking 1023E, 1025R, don't worry, I've done a video on that as well so you can kind of weigh the pros and cons there too. These machines are feature rich, okay? Besides everything we've already talked about, you know, I'm serious, you know, you can call me biased if you want to, but what I like to do is look for value in everything that I do. And I see the value in the 1025R over any other model that's out there in the subcompact world. I've done all sorts of videos on this, but I'm telling you. But besides everything we've already talked about, you just get so many other little bells and whistles that are on here. A nice suspension seat. You got the armrest on here. You have fender mounted work lights, one on each side. You got that padded floor, uh, floor mat that's down there. You have tilt steering, you have cruise control. You got your fender fill for the fuel right over here, which is also very nice. You got some of that decorative trim on here too but it's just a a very nice machine position control on your three-point hitch if you don't know what position control is it basically means you can fine-tune that that three-point hitch up and down just exactly where you want it it stays in that position if you want it to do that the Kubota subcompact doesn't do that the others don't do that either this is even the 1023 doesn't do that you got to get the 1025r if you want to have that position control but well refined worth the investment and it's considered the Cadillac of the subcompact world I choose John Deere and I choose Kubota based on reliability, based on resale value, okay? Time and time again, I hear about Kubota owners and I hear about John Deere owners 
talking about how 10, 15, 20 years ago, they paid X dollars for this uh, John Deere tractor, a Kubota tractor, brand new. And here they are 10, 15, 20 years later, selling it with maybe a thousand hours, maybe 1500 hours for the same price they paid for it. I just had a guy tell me the other day that he bought one new in the seventies, sold it in, I think the nineties, like 20 some years later for $5,000 more than what, he, than what he paid for it brand new. So you get the idea, you know, it may cost you more upfront for something like a John Deere 1025R, but it's going to hold its value. I'm telling you, you invest your money the right way and it's going to be there for you in the end. But it's not just that resale value, it really is the reliability. You know, you're not paying just for a name, right? You're paying for engineering. Everything that's going on behind the scenes there to give you the best performing, most reliable, most capable machine that's on the market both in the engineering and design phase and then the aftermarket support with the dealer network that's all around the country for parts and service. So all of these newer subcompacts, including the 1025R, you know, and your compacts do. Doesn't have to be just John Deere, but Kubota and a lot of the others also. Very low on maintenance, okay? These aren't gonna be something you gotta sit there and wrench on all the time, unless you're buying something that has, you know, thousands of hours on it, leaking all over, has all kinds of problems. But these newer ones that, you know, have a couple hundred hours, five, six hundred hours, even a thousand hours, are not gonna have a lot of maintenance going on. You know, fluid and filter changes are going to be every 200 or 400 hours, depending on the machine. I'm asked a lot, what fluids and what filters do you want to use? You know, I feel like just use the OEMs, whatever the manufacturer is that you're, that you're going with there, because they're designing these machines to run on those. That's what they're testing them with. That's what they're designing them with. So just stick with those OEM fluids and filters that you're going to use. I mean, these are really not going to be a whole lot more money. You're not doing it very often, right? Every couple hundred hours. So if it's a few more bucks to do it very infrequently, What's the big deal? Now they will give you other options for greases and for oils and for filters and all that kind of thing. So just check your manual, see what options are listed in there, but we've all got our own favorites that we like to use and that's perfectly okay. So just check the manual, make sure it's okay that's uh, being used in your machine and you'll be good to go. Now all that said, greasing is probably the most critical item that you wanna stay on top of. It's easy to get away from you, but you gotta do it quite frequently and it's really easy to do you have all these zerks that are going to be in different locations on your loader or on your mower deck or your backhoe or other attachments that you might have but you want an easy greasing system a lot of the traditional grease guns are a pain in the butt to use i know some guys prefer dealing with a pain in the butt and that's fine but if you want an easy way to do things that make it easier for you to stay on top of greasing this is just a protective cover right here but this is lube shuttle you can get five percent off if you go to lubeshuttle.com links below these cartridges screw in and screw out just like that very cool it's it's just you simply push the bottom of this cartridge up in here that's all you do to prime it it's very straightforward those no leaking no mess done a whole video on this system here but again five percent off with discount code gwt link below in the description well, that's it for now. If you haven't done so, hit subscribe right underneath the video. Make sure you read through that description as well. All sorts of useful links down there for tractor owners. Check out the other videos on my channel. That's it for me today. I'm gonna go try out this uh, dethatcher here a little bit more before it gets too dark on me. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Well, I tell you, it was just a couple of minutes just to get this pile here. Look at all that material. I can't imagine having to rake a huge area and try to get all this kind of material moved where you want it. But I did one pass just kind of through here so you can see, and I like it. It's not too aggressive, so that way you can go over it multiple times if you want. You can see it's going to pull up. This is just one pass, the thatch that's going to pull up, so nothing super aggressive that's going to cause a lot of turf damage or anything like that. But Certainly you could go over it multiple times, maybe crisscross if you want to do a nice, uh, really kind of rugged or aggressive dethatch uh, without a lot of turf damage. Or if you don't have a ton of thatch, just do this. But again, all the other reasons uh, or ways that you can use it there, cleaning up an area like this, sticks, leaves, all sorts of whatever it's going to get. You know, it's just like a rake, basically, but it's just a lot cheaper than some of those other alternatives. It's uh, a little bit more... You know, geared towards delicate surfaces like turf, you know, unlike a landscape rake or uh, maybe even a pine straw rake, which is still a little bit more aggressive. So pretty cool tool. I am impressed and happy to have it.
This bad boy is something you can get from goodworkstractors.com. We do sell these, we do ship them. 60 inches is the most popular size. These are geared for the subcompacts and small compacts, but 50 inch is an option, 70 inch is an option as well. You can see it fits right in the Spico. No bushings required on this quick hitch. That quick hitch saves you lots of money. Yep, we sell those too, so check out goodworkstractors.com.